this is Danielle Laverty and I'm doing video vlog number two on evaluating a song with a crime that has been committed in it. So to start I chose I Shot the Sheriff by Eric Clapton and um, the era of policing I believe this crime could have been committed in, even though the song was written in 1974, was the Reform Era, and the Reform Era was from 1930 to 1970. So during the Reform Era, era um, the police were more, in my opinion, trying to just get the case, solve it, and have it be done and over with, and the current era that we're in is the policing era where we uh, more investigate and try to solve the crime and get other community input on who they feel the suspect could be and interview people and all of that. So continuing on, the Idaho State Code that applies in this Crime, and we'll say the defendant is the person who wrote the song, is the song, is the person who wrote the song. So in this reading, the defendant committed the crime of murder, but under self-defense. So there's many different aspects, many different charges of murder that could be charged. It's not just murder. There could be vehicular manslaughter, manslaughter, homicide, there's a lot. So in reading Idaho statute under 18-4013, uh, I found that if this was to go to a jury trial, uh, the discharge of the defendant when a homicide is justifiable or excusable, meaning is justified by self-defense and um, excusable by the defendant was trying to protect himself from the danger that was coming at him. He had even said in the video that he had, or in the song, that he had felt that John Brown had always hated him and he did not know why. And once the defendant became a free man, John Brown had come after him, and it, it doesn't really go into much, but in my opinion, I feel that possibly John, uh, possibly Deputy or Sheriff John Brown could have broken into the house or confronted the defendant on the street. It doesn't really say how it happened, but either way, the defendant, in my opinion, had... Uh, a justifiable reason for shooting the sheriff. Uh, another Idaho statute I feel that covers this crime, and I'm not sure if there's multiple ones that could be used, but these are the top two that I picked, I had to weed through them, would be um, Idaho Statute 18-4012 which is an excusable homicide, and the homicide is considered excusable. I'll cut to where I believe it's um, pertinent in this case would be when committed upon any sudden and sufficient provocation, meaning uh, he's being provoked, he sees a weapon get drawn, or upon a sudden combat when no undue advantage is taken nor any dangerous weapon is used. That doesn't really apply, neither does uh, when this was committed by accident or misfortune, because it was not an accident that Sheriff John Brown was shot, but um, nor was it premeditated. So, the end of this statute of chapter 1840-12 says, 
says that the killing is not done in a cruel or unusual manner. And I feel that that really sticks out in this statute because the killing of John Brown was not cruel, nor was it unusual. How to define that, I'm not sure, but it what it was just a typical shot of the defendant trying to act in a self-defense manner against the suspect, John Brown. So, moving on from that, the elements of the crime, I believe, is men re mens rea with general intent. So, there were a few different intents, and this one, I feel, would be most suited under general intent because the defendant knew that this could or would create bodily harm, but it was done in a manner of, uh, for his protection, again, for his self-defense. Um, and so also, if I can just read out of here, quote the song, it says, um, freedom came my day, my way one day, and I started out of town. All of a sudden, I see Sheriff John Brown aiming to shoot me down. So I shot him, I shot him down. So pretty much, in short, that's saying that the defendant saw the suspect, John Brown, coming to shoot him down, and he had stated earlier in the writing that Sheriff John Brown has always hated me for what, I don't know. And so he uh, shot John Brown because he had known that great bodily harm was going to be done if he had not practiced his right of self-defense. Now, with the Idaho law, I did a little more research on that and how that would go. It was pretty interesting. Um, there are two different proponents of self-defense. There is the duty to retreat, and there is the stand your ground. Now, the duty to retreat is a doctrine that says that the potential victim, being the defendant, we'll call this the defendant, has the duty to retreat from the suspect, or John Brown. So if John Brown is coming at the defendant, the defendant is, by law, required to retreat before using any deadly force. Which is kind of hard for me to understand, because if there's deadly force being a weapon, especially a gun, coming at you and the defendant is running away, that still doesn't put him out of harm's way, but that's one of the proponents. And um, like I said, he must, he is required to do so before using any deadly force or he could be charged with murder. Another proponent would be the stand your ground, meaning um, there's advocates for this that argue that standing your ground um, is up to the jury to decide if the defendant was, in fact, acting in self-defense or acting as the provo provoker of the situation. So right now, Idaho doesn't have a stand-your-ground law. So it's my understanding that Idaho has the duty to retreat law. So if you feel that you're being threatened, you must run away before you use deadly force on the suspect. So I found that pretty interesting and please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm not understanding that correctly, but to the best of my knowledge, that's what 
is being practiced right now. Um, other than that, I think that pretty much wraps it up. And um, so I feel that this case with the I shot the sheriff would be a self-defense case against John Brown, against Dep Sheriff John Brown, because he did admit to shooting the sheriff, but denied shooting the deputy, and that ties it back into being in the reform era, because the police were just wanting to get the get the get the case, get it closed, get someone charged with it, and move on. So um, that wraps it up for my video blog number two, and I hope you enjoyed my information I researched, and please give me feedback if I'm incorrect and what I could do to better this uh, blog, I guess. Thank you.